Good morning. I'm John Grange. I'm the County Extension Agent for Ag and Natural Resources in Burleson County. And today we're going to talk about the common careless weed. Uh, the careless weed is also known more commonly as the pig, pig weed because pigs kind of relish it. And it's known for having a conspicuous flower between June and September. As you can see here, the, uh, the uh, conspicuous the way, it, way it forms and way it flowers to the top of the plant is uh, pretty common with this, with this careless weed. And uh, it's a pretty uh, significant sign of the plant that you have. Also, the pigweed it is more commonly found in areas like we are today, in the uh, in, in uh, barnyard areas where it's a moist, rich soil. And so, uh, as you can see here, whenever an area is not used quite a bit, careless weeds can kind of take over the area, such as a pen around your common barn and your uh, feed, feed yard areas. Okay, my name's Tom Hairgrove. I'm an extension veterinarian with the Department of Animal Science. And, and uh, like John said, this, this usually grows around areas that have been disturbed a little bit, around pens, stuff like that. Okay, there's two toxic principles with this weed. We're going to show you a little bit, some, some that's been sprayed. So basically when this plant's fairly young, it takes up a lot of nitrate. And so you can get nitrate toxicity pretty easy. And uh, then as the plant gets older, what happens is a lot of times there's... There's a thought that it's probably oxalate. That's the symptoms it shows. It's never been totally documented. All we know is that it kills cattle a little slower a lot of times. It affects their kidneys. So once this, once this is sprayed, it kind of increases their appetite for it once it's killed. And so again, kind of two different toxic principles, but both of them are, they can cause a lot of issues. When I was in practice, I'd, I'd see pins like this or more careless weed maybe. A bunch of cattle turned into it the night before, gonna test cattle in the morning, and they'd mow the careless weeds down, and then the next morning you'd have a bunch of dead cattle. So, so again, it's cer certainly something you wanna pay attention to. Talked about with the careless weed or, or pigweed, uh, the common areas you can see again a common area around the fences where you find this where it commonly grows you know it's it's commonly found in the barnyards but it also can be found in cropland too one of the big big things we see right here is is the most common thing you want to do with any weed is you want to spray and kill it well as we've done here you see it sprayed and killed and the big biggest probably most common mistake is is once we kill it we think it's safe and we can turn cattle loose on it as um, with it being as, as toxic as, as it is when while it's green, it's also as equally as toxic as it is when it's dead. One of the other issues that we, we commonly see is, is an increase in milk fever, uh, which could be a, uh, a result of the oxalates that's uh, produced from this plant. And so we commonly see that more in heifers um, where the milk fever will increase over time uh, due to uh, the consumption of the uh, dead dead plant of the careless weed. All right, we're now going to talk a little bit about uh, the diagnostics uh, for animals that may have been uh, intoxicated with pigweed. Uh, we can look at both the deceased animal as well as the live animal. Uh, if you still have an animal that's alive and you're suspecting this, we can look for nitrates uh, in both the blood serum as well as the urine. And we're really looking for the nitrite uh, formulation of nitrates. But if the animal has already died, uh, there's a couple of things we can do there. One, uh, we can look at ocular fluid, which is the fluid inside the eyeball, and you can collect that with a sterile needle and syringe, submit it to the lab in a, a sterile tube like a red top vacutainer tube. Uh, or you can submit the entire eyeball, which we often get and will collect the fluid ourselves and again we're looking for nitrate or nitrites. Uh, we can also try to identify uh, bits of the plant in rumen content so if you submit uh, rumen contents for analysis we can look to see if the animal indeed has been grazing uh, this particular weed. We can't really do the nitrate test in a rumen it's not accurate but we can try to identify by the plants. Uh, we can also look at histopaths. Sometimes we'll see kidney damage. Uh, the uh, oxalate crystals oftentimes are washed out though during the histopath uh, preparation process due to the different
chemicals that are used, but we may see uh, renal tubular damage in that animal. If you decide to submit rumen contents for analysis, we need a fairly uh, large uh, sample, at least a quart if not a half a gallon or a gallon of rumen contents uh, can be submitted to us and we'll use what we need to try to sort through that. If you submit only a tiny amount, it's really not representative of what that cow has been consuming. Uh, so more is better with rumen content.